In this video, we review adiabatic gas expansions. All right, so let's uh, try to define what an adiabatic gas expansion is. A gas expansion uh, is something that we have out here, uh, and then the definition of an adiabatic process is that in which the heat transfer or the energy transfer as heat is zero. Okay, so the idea is that uh, you can do this expansion, but the energy transfer as heat, Q, is equal to zero. Okay, so our goal for this video is try to see how do we begin to think about these adiabatic expansions, and we will uh, delve a little deeper into the relationships of the uh, physical state variables in uh, subsequent videos. Now, so let's uh, set up here what the first law looks like for this type of process. This is your first law, but of course, if the process is adiabatic, what that means is that this term is zero, and then we can write here in uh, work that this is indeed an adiabatic process. Okay, so uh, so far we uh, this is how the first law looks like, but uh, there's not a clear understanding of how to calculate this delta U or this work adiabatic. Uh, we're not assuming that the process is reversible, uh, no constant external pressure necessarily, so we don't really have a good expression to calculate how that work looks like. And again, in this video, we're going to try to see how do we begin to think about that. Okay, so, um, all right. Uh, the first thing that we can actually do is, is recognize uh, what variables are changing here. Okay, so these are closed systems, so the number of moles will not change. Okay, uh, then you have the volume, which increases, obviously. This is an expansion. And then you have the temperature, uh, T1. Right, so notice that uh, energy is leaving the system because you actually have that the system is pushing out that piston, is, is losing energy as work. Right, so then um, uh, because there's no energy input into the system, right, we're not allowing for energy, any energy transfer as heat into the system, then that means that uh, the gas cools down. Uh, because it loses energy when it does that work. Okay, so there's going to be a change in temperature in which the final temperature will actually be lower than the initial temperature. That is a hallmark of adiabatic expansions. You have a cooling of the gas. Now, subsequently, there will also be uh, a change in pressure that we will study a little bit later on. Okay, so that's, that's important to recognize that, yes, you're expanding, but the gas cools down. All right, so with that, with that knowledge, what we can actually do is try to see how um, we can break apart the system into a couple of steps that are going to let us calculate this change in internal energy and work in a relatively better way. Okay, so we're going to draw here how a temperature versus volume diagram would look like for this adiabatic expansion. Okay, so we start here with low volume uh, or a small volume, and we end up with a uh, larger volume, that is the expansion. And then the temperature initially is higher than at the end. Okay, so that is the initial point of expansion. That is the final point of expansion, and the adiabatic path uh, would look like this. Okay, so that's that's how uh, the system progresses, and that is the adiabatic path. Now our goal is to calculate what the change in internal energy is, and we know that the internal energy is a state function. So we can actually uh, try to trace an alternative route. Uh, from the initial point to the final point that might enable us to actually calculate uh, the change in internal energy a little bit more conveniently. And, and we certainly can do that by breaking apart this uh, process into two steps. One of them would be this one, uh, in which what you ha will have is just an isothermal uh, gas expansion, right? No change in temperature, that temperature doesn't change, but the volume increases. So that is going to be a reversible isothermal expansion. And then the second step uh, would be just that particular step in which you have constant volume and the only thing that is changing is the, the drop in temperature. So that is cooling at constant volume which we're also going to make reversible. Okay, but that will be cooling at constant volume. Now these two processes uh, we actually know how to calculate change in internal energy and uh, uh, work for them, right? So uh, we can go for the uh, reversible isothermal expansion, which is your first step. And what we actually know is that if the temperature doesn't change, and this is an ideal gas, 
then uh, there's actually no change in internal energy. Okay, so the change in internal energy for here will be zero uh, because again, this, this is an ideal uh, gas expansion that is isothermal. No change in temperature, no change in internal energy of the gas, and that means that delta U is zero. Okay, so that is the first step. Now the second step is just simply cooling at constant volume, and we actually know how to calculate that quite well. If we assume that the heat capacity at constant volume is constant with temperature, then uh, the equation you uh, get out here will just be, will just be the change uh, in temperature multiplied by the heat capacity at constant volume. Okay, so uh, by virtue of breaking apart this adiabatic step into two steps that we are familiar with, then we actually can calculate how that, uh, what the change in internal energy is. And again, remember that uh, in the adiabatic, adiabatic process, this change in internal energy, this is going to be equal to your work, your adiabatic work. Okay, so that is uh, adiabatic. Okay, so this is actually how uh, we calculate work for um, an adiabatic uh, expansion. Okay, in the next videos we're going to see uh, if we can actually calculate a relationship between the initial volume and the final volume, the initial temperature and the final temperature. Right, so the idea is wh whether uh, we can find a thermodynamic relationship that gives us a connection between T1V1 and T2V2. And in a second video, we're going to see that same relationship, uh, but including pressure, right? So, so how pressure and volume change in an, adi in an adiabatic expansion.